All right, welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna to be talking about uh, standard RF0, which is all about slope. Our objective today is that you will be able to find the slope of a line if you are given a graph. Before we'll start talking about slope, let's first just recall some information about the coordinates of points. When we talk about uh, points, we always talk about them in such a way that we talk about the ordered pair. Now, an ordered pair is just a list of numbers in a particular order. As we can see here, the X coordinate always comes before the Y coordinate. This is similar to the alphabet where X comes before Y. Your X coordinate is always going to rec or always going to reflect the left and right of your coordinate and the Y is always going to be the up and down. If you move to the right or up, that is considered to be a positive value. If you move left or down, that is considered to be negative. So over here, we just have a couple of points here that we're going to start by listing out their coordinates. So if we look at this point A for a second, remember the X coordinate or the X axis is the line that goes right there. And the Y coordinate is the, or axis is the one that goes up and down. Now looking at this, we can see that this point A has an X coordinate of zero because of the fact that if I were to draw a line straight down from A to the X axis, that it would land right where two is. So we say that the X coordinate of that point is two. Now, if I draw a line over to the Y axis, I can see that we have a Y value of three. So we would say that our coordinate is the coordinate two, three. And we can write that right over here. Moving on to point B, again, we'll do the same thing. So we'll start at our point and we will come straight on down to the X axis. And on the X axis, I can see that I had an X value of a negative three. So then coming over to my graph, I will have negative three as the very first thing here. Now, following the Y coordinate of point B over, we can see that we come over to a Y value of one which means we can put a one right there and be done with that. Now, again, we can repeat this same process for our other points that we are given. So if I did this for point C, we would first start by finding where the X is. And we can see that it's one after where three is, so that must be the point four. So this will be at four comma, and then we need to check to see where the Y comes in and it appears that that comes in at a negative two. So this will be the point for negative two. Finally, we get to point D and point D is kind of unique because when we look at point D, we can see that it is located on the Y axis. Now, since it's located on the Y axis, when I try to trace um, up to the X to figure out where that's located, it looks like we land right in the middle. And that's exactly true, we land at the X coordinate of zero. Now the Y coordinates relatively self-explanatory because you're just on it right now. You're on the point uh, Y equals a negative three. So our coordinate for this one would be zero, negative three. What you should do now is you should pause the video for a quick second and you should try to identify these four points on your own. After pausing the video, you can come back and I will walk you through the solution very quickly. All right, welcome back. So looking at this, point A, we will see has an X value of four and a Y value of three. Point B is located at negative two, zero. Point C is gonna be located at three, negative one. And point D is gonna be located at negative one, positive five. So again, we have our four points right there. It's always just important to remember that you can find the coordinate of any point just by tracing its location down to the x-axis and over to the y-axis. By doing that, you can always locate where that point actually is. Okay, um, let's talk about slope here for a minute. I'm going to skip this y-intercept, x-intercept talk for a minute, but we might come back to it. Today, uh, our goal is to talk about slope. And what slope is, is, slope is just the steepness of a line.
Now, when we look at slope, we're going to find that there's four different kinds of slope. And again, it's always referring to just the steepness. The first kind of slope that we see right here is what we would call a positive slope. Positive slopes are always thought about as if you were to start on the left-hand side and you were to always go up as you walk to the right, right? Just like you read a book from left to right, you're going to always read a line from left to right as well. We start on the left of the line, and if we go uphill, we say that we have a positive slope. We are gaining altitude at that point. Conversely, a negative slope would be a slope where when you start on the left-hand side, you would actually be going downhill. So any slope where you start up higher and you work to the right and you get lower is going to be considered a negative slope. Positive slope and negative slope are going to be the two most common types of slope that we encounter, but there are in fact two more. The next type of slope is what we would consider to be a zero slope. Zero slope means the line has no steepness. Another way to think about a line with no steepness is kind of flat, it's horizontal. So over here we can see the horizon in this picture. It looks very flat. Um, this is our idea of something with zero slope. When you see a line with zero slope, it's literally not going to have any rays from left to right. When I go left to right, I just stay at the same height the whole time. Last but not least, we get to a line with undefined slope. Um, a line with undefined slope is always going to be going straight up and down. There is no left to right when I talk about undefined slope. So in the, even a little drawing over here, undefined slope starts to get a little odd for us because we can see our road coming up and then it's just a sheer cliff all the way down before it kind of continues on. That straight up and down piece starts to give us trouble with lines. But what we should know about it at this point is that that's what we call undefined slope. So again, we have four kinds of slope. We have positive slope. That's when we start on the left and go up. We have negative slope. That's when we start on the left and go down. We have zero slope. That's when we don't go up or down. And we have undefined slope. That's when we go straight up and down. So over here, you see four um, examples, and we're just going to identify the kind of slope. So again, we always start on the left if we can. So starting on the left of the sonic one over here, if I start on the left here, I can see that I go up from left to right. So we would say that we have a positive slope here. Looking at B, in B, there really is no left or right to start on because our graph is only going up and down. When it's only going up and down, that is when we say that we have undefined slope. Moving over to numbers or letter C, again, we always start on the left. Starting on the left here, if I work down, as I go from left to right, I will see that my graph drops, meaning this would match up with a negative slope. And last but not least, we come over to D. We can see it looks like somebody running. If we start over here on the left of the graph, we're just checking to see, well, do we go up or do we go down? And on this one, it appears that we stay flat. Whenever we stay flat, there's no rise and there's no drop. So we say that this must be zero slope. So again, we can see four our four different slopes here represented in a variety of different real world situations for us. One quick way to remember slope is by remembering slope dude over here. So the way Slope Dude works is on his face, you can see all the different slopes. So starting with his eyebrow here, since we are going up, we would say that we have positive slope. If you start on his other eyebrow, remember we always read from right to left. You can see that his eyebrow goes down from left to right, which means that we have negative slope. His nose 
is vertical. It is straight up and down here. And whenever that happens, that is what we call undefined slope. And last but not least, his mouth, we would say, has zero slope because it is flat all the way across. There's no rise and there's no run. Slope dude, again, is a good way to just help you remember what is going on with slope. Here's a couple of problems where we are just going to identify the slope. So looking at this first one, the easiest way to identify slope from a graph is strictly to first start by finding two points that the line goes through perfectly. Here are the two points that I've identified. Once you've found those two points, all you need to do is you start always at the point on the left and we look at the rise over the run. Now the rise is how far we go up or down and the run is how far we go over to get to the other point. Now just like I said, we are always going to start at the point on the left. Okay, That's something we can't forget. So if we start at the point on the left here, it appears that we need to go down one and over one, two, three to get to our next point. So anytime we go down in math here, we are going to call that, or we're just going to make it minus or a negative. So we are going to go down one and we are going to go to the right three. Again, this only works if you are working or starting with the point on the left. So our rise in this situation was what we would say a negative one, we actually dropped, and our run was a positive three. So we would say that we have a slope of a negative one third here. Looking at the next problem, again, step one, identify your two points. Once you've identified your two points, you must always start with the point on the left. As you do this, you should always go up or down first to try to make sure we always get this right. So starting at that point on the left, looks like we go up one, two, three to get to the same height as that other point. Since we went up, we're going to say plus three right there. Now we also go one to the right. That would be our run. So in this situation, when we talk about our rise over our run, which is also known as our slope, we can see that our rise was a positive three and our run was one. And I can actually reduce that fraction and say that it is just three. Looking at our third graph here, again, first start by identifying your points. Once you have identified those points, you need to start at the left point and work your way over to the right point. So starting at the left point, looks like we need to go down one, two, three, down three to get to the same height, and then we need to go over one, two. So down one, two, three. Since we went down, we'll say a minus three, and then we went to the right two, and anytime we go to the right, it's always positive. Again, I always start by going up or down first, and aside from that, always make sure you're being very careful with your negatives and your positives. So since our rise was a negative three, and our run was two, we would say the slope of this line is a negative three halves. Looking at our fourth problem here, again, we are gonna start at a point on the left and we're gonna to work towards a point on the right. Doing so, when we do this, we always need to start by going up or down first. So starting at my point on the left, one, two, three, four, five, to get to the same height. Once I get to the same height, that was five, I'm gonna mark it. Now I'm going to go over one, two, three. So I had to go up five. That was my rise. That was my change in Y. And then I needed to go to the right three. So this line has a slope of five thirds. All right. Last thing we're going to be doing in these last four problems, we're going to quickly go through and find the slope. And then we're just going to classify that slope as positive, negative, zero, or undefined. Now, looking at our first problem here, one thing that's different with this problem than the last four problems is our points are no longer clearly indicated. 
what that means is you then need to go in and find the points where it perfectly crosses. It looks like I have one right there. If that's my point on the left, I'm going to look for a point on the right where it also perfectly crosses. I might have one right here. Once I have that, I start always at my point on the left, and I'm going to work up or down first. So in this case, it's down one, two, three. And I need to work to the right, two. So I would say that my slope would be a negative three over two. Now, looking at my graph, I can figure out if it's positive, negative, or whatever, a variety of different ways. If I first just start at the very tip top of the line, the point that I see on the farthest left, it looks like we're going downhill. Based on the definitions that we defined earlier, that would mean that we have a negative slope. Now, it's important to realize something here. If I look at this slope, this is a negative number too. So that would also tell me that I have negative slope. So we just need a mark that we have negative slope on this problem. Looking at our next one, we should first start by trying to locate points. So I have a point there, and it looks like I have another point there. If you choose different points, you should still be able to get the same answer as this. And I'll show you that in just one second. So starting at the point on the left, we go up one, and we go over two. So our rise was one, and our run was two. Again, if we start at the point, or I'm sorry, the line at the very left, we are going uphill which means we have a positive slope. And we can see that our fraction here, our slope was positive as well. Now, one thing I told you is that if you would have picked a different two points here, you would have got the same slope. And this is what I mean. If we still picked this first point, this pink one right here, but instead we maybe picked this point over here, we should still get the same slope. And this is what I mean. If I use those two points, I would need to go up one, two, three, and then I need to go over one, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, three over six would be my slope. And since that's a fraction, we can always reduce it. And that's when we see that these two things are actually the same. Looking at our third graph here, right away we should notice, hey, this line's going up and down. That's straight up and down. There's something funny going on there. And if you actually go back up into your notes, it says a line with undefined slope is a vertical line. So if we are seeing a vertical line, we know that it has to have what we call undefined slope. So we can come over here and we can write that right now, undefined. And that's really easy to mark at that point because they really are the same. Last but not least, we can see this one a couple of different ways. If I come over here and I mark my points, if I start at the point on the left, we can see there's no rise in this. So our rise is automatically going to be zero. And our run in this situation could maybe be four. And it's important to realize that anytime you take zero divided by a number, you are always going to get four. Or I'm sorry, zero divided by any number, that's always going to give you zero. And that's exactly what this has. This has zero slope because it's nice and flat. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it uh, instructional for you and that your homework goes smooth. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a good day.